Hello students, this is Nancy Sutherland. I'm very excited to bring you this lecture on Chapter 15, Strategic Pricing Methods. These questions are the learning objectives guiding the chapter and will be explored in more detail on the following slides. We are tasked with identifying three methods that firms use to set their prices, describing the differences between an everyday low price and a high low strategy, explaining the difference between a price skimming and a market penetration pricing strategy, identifying tactics used to reduce prices to consumers, identifying tactics used to reduce prices to business, and knowing prices that have the potential to deceive customers. Students, there are three different methods that firms use to develop pricing strategies for their businesses. They are simply cost-based, competitor-based, and a more elaborate approach entitled value-based. The choice of a pricing strategy is specific to the product, service, and target market. In fact, a firm may need different strategies across its products and services and over time as market conditions change during the life of its business. Undoubtedly, many factors go into a firm's decision regarding their pricing strategy. Cost base is the simplest way to derive a price for a product or service. However, the application may be limited due to the fact that the cost base methods do not recognize that customers or competitors play in the marketplace. Once all the costs are added up, this simple method adds a percentage amount to the unit cost to derive the price of the good. Student simplicity is the major benefit of this method. This method is merely a simple mathematics calculation. But what are the potential problems associated with it? The biggest negativity is that it does not consider what the value the customer places on the product or service. Students, why would someone pay far more for the same item in different stores? For example, the same diamond at Costco and Tiffany's? They would pay more because they perceive that the diamond at Tiffany's is a superior quality than at Costco because it's a warehouse club. They further derive brand esteem by the Tiffany's diamond. More attention from their friends and family is to be had if they're able to pay the higher price at Tiffany's. Homes are the same way. Two identical homes can be priced differently due to the perceived supreme location of one. When pricing your home for sale, real estate prices are based heavily on the prices of other homes in the area. There are many websites like Zillow.com to help you gather information when pricing your home for sale. I provided the URL of Zillow.com for you to review as well. Sellers or business owners need to determine customer value perceptions. I would suppose that most everyone knows that a Rolex is not just another watch, it's a Rolex. That is the brand distinction and brand esteem being projected by the consumer. Thus the print ad for Rolex definitively points to a watch with higher quality. Rolex is world famous for its performance and reliability, definitely value. I've also put in a funny commercial depicting the value of the Mercedes Benz, another luxury good. Before we leave this slide, students, value-based method is another way to determine the price of a good or service. Students, these are examples of good test questions. So it's time for another assessment. What are the three different strategies for setting prices? Cost-based, competitor-based, and value-based. Question two, how can you use value-based strategies for setting prices? Value based include approaches to setting prices that focus on the overall value of the product offering as perceived by the customer. There are two key approaches, including improvement value method and the cost of ownership method. Everyone should know that the everyday low price leader is Walmart. In fact, Walmart makes other retailers, even large ones, shake in their boots. Walmart somehow always manages to undercut everyone else with the everyday low pricing strategy. Their success is due to the collaboration that is done within the supply chain. Remember I have emphasized that conflict in the supply chain reduces efficiency and thus reduces customer value. In contrast, the collaboration increases the supply chain efficiency and thereby increases customer value. 
Walmart collaborated with Wild Oats. Because of their economies of scale, Walmart and Wild Oats can work with larger farms versus smaller farms and processing plants that cater only to organic food production versus other foods as well. This saves time, labor, and money by a margin as much as 20 to 30 percent, thereby lowering per unit cost, allowing for a lower priced organic offering. This collaboration increases overall supply chain efficiency. It also increases overall quantity of supply and increases perceived customer value because of the lower prices for the typically higher priced organic food line. This action should in turn increase the demand for organic foods. In contrast to the everyday low price strategy of Walmart, the high low pricing is a little different pricing strategy. Usually the store will run a sale for certain days or even a few hours like from 11 to 2. The price is typically off the list price or the reference price such as 45% off of $1,195 purse. The farther the selling price from the reference price or the list price, the more the customer thinks that they have a good deal. Typically places that have very high prices already use the high low pricing strategy. People generally come up with the correct prices for products that they are used to using. However, they find it difficult to assess the reference price of a product that they are non-familiar. For example, I know what current rental properties are because I have interest. Yet I have a greater difficulty knowing the price of a motorcycle because I'm not in the market for a motorcycle. Thus I have an internal reference for the rental properties because I know but would have to go out externally to find the reference point for a motorcycle. The reason that market penetration pricing and price skimming strategy exist is because of the extreme difficulty to price a new product and put it into the market for selling. This puts businesses into a dilemma. These new products have no similar products in the market to compare. Thus market penetration pricing is done with the entry of a new product. The product is priced low so as to gain market share and increase demand because of the lower price. There is some danger to this in that if the consumers are willing to pay a higher price then there are dollars that are not taken as income by a business. In contrast, price skimming prices the new product at a premium price to get the early adopter to a buy. Thus the next level of pricing is done which is somewhat lower than the first price to secure that next group of purchasers. For price skimming to work, the product or service must be perceived by the consumer as breaking new ground in some way, offering consumers some new benefit or product differentiation that is not available in other products, i.e. there are no similar products to them. Time for another assessment again, students. Explain the difference between everyday low prices and high low pricing. Everyday low prices save search costs of finding lowest overall prices because they're already low. High-low provides the thrill of the chase for the lowest price. Question 2. What pricing strategy should be considered when introducing a new product? There are two, price skimming and penetration pricing. Students, what we've been discussing are pricing strategies, which are a long-term approach to setting prices broadly in an integrative effort across all the firm's products based on the five core components, company objectives, cost, customers, competition, and channel members of pricing that we went over in Chapter 14. Tactics, on the other hand, offer short-term methods to focus on select components of the five critical components. Succinctly, pricing strategies are long-term and pricing tactics are short-term. There are many examples of pricing tactics aimed at customers, including markdowns, quantity discounts, seasonal discounts, coupons, rebates, leasing, price bundling, leader pricing, and price lining. I further add that there are business-to-business -business pricing tactics that are employed with the supply chain. In fact, seasonal discounts provide retailers with an incentive to buy prior to the normal selling season. For example, the business buys air conditioners from the manufacturer before summer when they are needed. Cash discounts are also offered to buy if they pay their invoice early. 
Allowances are further made to retailers so that they will advertise the manufacturer's product or stock a new product. Likewise, quantity discounts can influence retailers to buy a larger quantity than they would normally do in a specific order or over a specific period of time. Lastly, zone pricing bases the cost of shipping the merchandise to the retailer on the distance between the retailer and the manufacturer. The farther away that the merchandise is shipped, the more it costs the retailer. What are some consumer-oriented pricing tactics, students? Price lining, price bundling, and leader pricing. Question 2. What are some business-to-business -business oriented pricing tactics? Seasonal discounts, cash discounts, allowances, quantity discounts, uniform delivered pricing, and zone pricing. Any time that money is in the mix, students, therein lies where the pricing has ethically been done. Remember we've discussed the reference price. Specifically, if a business compares a reduced price or a sale price as lower than the reference price, then the business must have sold the particular product or service at that reference price or it is unethical or deceptive pricing. Although in business there is much accepted puffery versus a business being guilty of deception, however. A host of laws and regulations at both the federal and state levels attempt to prevent unfair pricing practices, but some are poorly enforced and others are difficult to prove. Deceptive reference pricing, lost leader pricing, bait and switch are either considered illegal or ethical, however. This is the last assessment question, students. What common practices are considered to be illegal or unethical? Deceptive reference pricing, lost leader pricing, and bait and switch. Students, I want to thank you for listening to my lecture on Chapter 15. It has been my pleasure to discuss these marketing principles. Remember to take the next few moments and review more marketing vocabulary to further enhance your marketing acumen. Thank you immeasurably. Kindest regards, Nancy Sutherland.